Good morning and welcome to St Andrew's Brighton for this service on the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Jesus speaks words of encouragement, which traditionally we refer to as comfortable words. These are familiar words, significant words. Our Bishop Paul Barker wrote about them recently, relating them to the clergy pressures of the present COVID time. Familiarity might cause us to overlook them and their importance. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Firstly, I'm well aware that many of us feel acutely weary and heavy laden in these COVID days. For us clergy, the pressures and competing voices about reopening services, concerns about safety against coronavirus and its financial fallout from October, and resuming hall hires are quite draining. The compliance load for hygiene and recording is also a heavy burden. These words of Jesus then highlight two things. It is Jesus himself to whom we turn. Come to me, he said, not to church, even on Zoom, not to bed or on holidays, to friends or counsellors, but to Jesus. Of course, those other things might be important and helpful, but the point is to come to Jesus first and foremost. Has this lockdown drawn you closer to Jesus? I think it ought to have been for all of us. Let me urge you to remain disciplined in doing so. Secondly, it is Jesus that gives us true rest. That through Jesus we find rest, heavenly rest, a Sabbath rest, with the invitation still standing today to enter into such rest, as the writer of the book of Hebrews puts it. I trust you will enjoy this service today. Good morning and welcome to St Andrew's Brighton. Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for this Sunday. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us that what we do for the least of his brothers and sisters, we do also for him. We give, give us the will to serve others, as he was the servant of all who gave up his life and died for us, and yet lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book Genesis. 经文来自创世纪24章. So he said, I'm Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he was become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O oh Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going, I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, Please give me a little water for your jar to drink, and who will say to me, Drink, and I will draw you for your camels also. Let her be the woman, whom the Lord has appointed for my, son's master, for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, Please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethel, Noah's son, whom Mekha born to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the breakfast on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the God. And the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Here what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Psalm 45 Hear, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house, and the king will desire your beauty, since he is your Lord. Bow to him. The people of Tyre will seek your favor with gifts the richest of the people with all kinds of wealth. The princess is decked in her chamber with gold-woven robes. In many-colored robes, she is led to the king. Behind her, the virgins, her companions, follow. With joy and gladness, they are led along as they enter the palace of the king. In the place of ancestors, you, king, shall have sons. You will make them princes in all the earth. I will cause your name to be celebrated in all generations. Therefore, the peoples will praise you forever and ever.
A reading from Paul's letter to Romans, chapter 7. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin dwells within me. So I find it to be a way that then I want to do what is good. Evil lies close at hand, for I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my hand, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rest me from this body of death. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind, I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh, I am a slave to the law of sin. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he was a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, Recently, I attended an online forum about St. Augustine's spiritual growth concept. I found it interesting and meaningful, so I would like to share it with you. According to Augustine, at the beginning of our life is a journey from darkness to light. As a fetus who was so comfortable in the darkness in mother's womb, when the moment came that the mother gave birth, in the process, the fetus becomes an infant, arriving from the darkness of the mother's womb to the world of light. The fetus must have experienced some kind of anxiety. I'm not a scientist and don't know if this has been proved or not. But from a spiritual point of view, I agree with his concept. For example, most children started their kindergarten on the first day in crying because they realized that their trusted parents who are their rock and refuge, were all of a sudden absent 
and disappeared. We can recall our own experience. And to the children, the darkness is huge. And we know how much anxiety was in their tears. Then gradually, as we grew up, for many of us, the dark experience becomes more and more evident. Failure in study, the difficult first job interview, failure of first love, then experience of unemployment, marriage problem, illness, eventually the anticipation of death. And now, of course, the pandemic crisis like the COVID-19. In this growing process, every instant and crisis seems to be forcing us from a light, sunny room into another dark and bottomless pit. According to Augustine, longing is a necessary element and strength to move from the darkness toward the light. When we find ourselves helpless, it is also a motivation for us to struggle to survive. We have to understand we are not masters of life. I cannot fully control my life, and I do not have all the solutions. If we have such feelings and knowledge, it is the beginning of seeking God. If people do not desire God, they will never find God. If they are self-satisfied, they will not seek higher levels of power to help them. Longing gives us the instinct and the desire for help. When we have a desire to survive, it is the first step for us to seek the meaning of life. This step is the first step towards spiritual life. If we are willing to take the first step, we will find that God has been calling us, waving towards us and waiting for us. It is our key for opening the door of life. Therefore, the longing is I don't understand, but I must understand. I have no power, but there must be other forces that can help me get out of trouble. My life is out of control, but there must be a master who controls of my life. The world is beautiful, but flawed. There must be a flawless world. From the perspective of the COVID-19 pandemic, we cannot eliminate the virus infection, but we can pray for the protection and care from the master of life. However, the sad thing and problem today is that people have the longing but cannot recognize it. It is camouflaged by every distraction available to us in modern society. It is like today's Gospel reading, where Jesus described his generation as people who have no spiritual response to neither John the Baptist or himself when they preached the kingdom of God. The people's ears are not turned to hearing his word because they are busy listening to other messages, giving priority 
to other desires. Their longing is not focused. Jesus used the metaphor in verses seventeen to sixteen to seventeen. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the market places and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. In other words, we tried to draw your attention to truth, but you had your minds on other things. In verses twenty-five, Jesus contrasts two kinds of people, and he said. Because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Here, the infants are those who face the anxiety of darkness, admit their vulnerability and helplessness, admit their limitations, firmly believe. That there must be a power to help them through the darkness. The infants are blessed group of people, who are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, who hunger and thirst for righteousness. The so-called wise and intelligent are those who think they know it all, who are captivated. By false riches and do not acknowledge their spiritual need. We thank God for giving us earthly life and earthly light, giving us the ability to seek knowledge, to be able to witness to truthfulness, kindness, and ability to distinguish and exclude darkness from destruction. But we have to realize, the earthly life and the light are limited. When we are facing the anxiety of darkness, only by entering the true light, the true light of spiritual life, looking towards the true God, who created all things in the universe, and becoming. Part of his spiritual life, then we can truly escape from our darkness. Psalm thirty-six nine, for with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see the light. Jesus, as the Son of God, proclaimed in John eight twelve. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In the Old Testament, Isaiah thirty fifteen, the Lord rebuked the Israelites that in returning and rest you shall be saved in quietness and trust. Shall be your strength, but they said no. Today's gospel twenty-eight. Jesus said, "Come to me, all that you are weary and are carrying heavy burden, and I will give you rest." Jesus' invitation is gentle. He has always been gentle and humble, because he was gentle and humble in his heart. He has always obeyed the will of the Father. His life on the earth for thirty-three years, his only focus is to obey the will of the Father, willingly dying on the cross. For you and me, and everyone in the world,
Are you weary? Are you heavy burdened at this time? Are you experiencing darkness in your life? Do you have a longing for light? Then come, find His rest, enjoy His light. God bless you. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Our loving God is here, attentive to his children. Let us pray to him now. Father, we pray that your church may always be open to receive your love. Keep us swept clear of pomposity, complacency and self-righteousness. We come humbly and simply into your presence and wait on you, knowing our dependence on you and rejoicing in it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all world leaders and their governments, for the strength of authority comes not through force and domination, but through cooperation and mutual respect. We pray for greater consideration of the needs of one another and of our planet, and a desire to right past wrongs and injustices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for a growing maturity in our thinking and our loving that enables us to be childlike. We pray for healing from all the damage that prevents us from growing up. We pray that our children in this church may be helped to grow strong and we thank you for all who learn from them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all who cry out for rest and relief, all who are carrying terrible burdens that weigh them down, all whose poverty denies them the chance of healing, all whose wealth denies them the chance of knowing their need of you. Lord, in your mercy, Father, we pray for those who die unprepared to meet you and for all who have died recently, remembering Dean King and Patricia Hager, both those well known to us and those dying unknown and unnoticed all over the world. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for your gentleness and humility which puts our pride and vanity to shame. Teach us to trust more and more in your truth, discarding what the world considers essential and rejoicing in your freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ said to all who turn to him in faith. Come to me all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. John said. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the expiation for our sins. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with St. Andrew and the, all the powers of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise, blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray in our own language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Almighty God, we know that everything is in your sovereign control. We ask that you keep this new coronavirus from continuing to spread. Give government officials the ability to safely handle people arriving from other countries. Help people decide to stay home instead of traveling or going out needlessly. Holy Spirit, remind people to wash their hands properly. And while it may be heartbreaking, Comfort families as they decide to keep their distance from elderly or other high-risk family members. Amen. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. 
Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.